What's going on, Bubble Monster? said Crinklebutt. Oh, you know, I'm just digging. Where are you digging to? I'm digging the hole. Down to the small's watches. The what? said Crinklebutt. The small's watches. What are the small's watches? said Crinklebutt. Well, the small's watches, they're the, they're the creatures that put the gold in the earth. They slither around, and they've got gold dust on their back, and then they, they create gold. You know the seams of gold that you find in the earth? Your gold ring. That's where it came from. The snores watches. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. There's no such thing as snores watches. You just wait, said Bubble Monster. He kept digging and digging and digging and digging and digging. He was out there for three days, digging. Crinklebow would visit him. Do you want a cup of tea and a slice of cake? No, I want a slice of tea and a cup of cake. Oh yeah, I forgot about that, said Crinklebutt, as she gave him the slice of tea and a cup of cake. Oh, that's delightful. Thank you. Back to work for me, said Bubble Monster. The hole was very deep now, and he'd made a very ornate ladder that went down the hole. Wow, what an amazing ladder you've created there. Yes, it allows me to go up and down, up and down, said Bubble Monster. Yes, you, you need to rest sometimes. You can't just keep digging the entire time you're here. Oh, yes, I can, said Bubble Monster. I don't get tired. I don't even have to sleep nowadays. Crinklebutt looked at him strangely. It sure was Bubble Monster was one of the most unusual creatures she'd ever met. Sometimes he'd tell stories into the night to himself and look up at the stars through his invisible ceiling. Ah, oh, Crinklebutt, you do make the most delightful slice of tea and cups of cake. Oh, thank you, said Bubble Monster. Now, it was with that there was a big bang as Bubble Monster's spade came down on something which was quite metal. Oh, look, gold! The Snozwatches must have been here, said Bubble Monster. No, but that's amazing, you've just found gold. We, we got so much money now, look at all of that gold. Yeah, I knew gold was here all along. It's just gold, man. Who cares? Crinklebutt looked at him strangely. Bubble Monster was not at all interested in material things. He was more interested in that space we talked about above his head. 300 metres above. Bubble Monster, are you doing that thing again with the 300 metres above your head and pulling it down and radiating it through your heart? Said Crinklebutt. Always! I always have to do that. If I don't do that, I'm affected by everybody around me because I just feel them all. Instead of feeling them all, I can have some kind of effect on what they're feeling by pulling it down and radiating it around myself. I've been doing that too, said Crinklebutt. Look, Crinklebutt surprised him. She made the most ornate rainbow around her entire body. And all of a sudden, lots of butterflies flocked around her. And also, a deer came up and licked her hand. And she gave him some of her slice of cake. Um, wow, this really works. And people are drawn to you when you do this kind of thing. They're not repulsed. Yeah, said Bubble Monster. Watch what happens when I get rid of it. All of the little creatures ran off. Wow, so there's a difference between that feeling, which was, I don't know, it's kind of like love, and then the other feeling, which is kind of like fear. Yeah, said Bubble Monster. Because we're powerful beings, we experience both very, very intensely. Um, and you do too. And if you're not in control of that feeling, then it can cause quite devastating results. Like with Albert Herbert Hawkins? Yes. Albert Herbert Hawkins is a perfect example. He's completely evil, and then he has a complete light side. Light and dark, 
dark and light to polarities. So how do you keep choosing the right side? Said Crinklebutt. Well, it's easy. Once you've experienced love, the opposite doesn't feel quite as good. So you don't really want to go there anymore. And also the other thing that you experience when you do this is even when really, really bad things start to happen, you can feel quite balanced and quite normal. So much so that people think that you are quite weird for feeling the way that you are. And it's quite unusual. I see, said Crinklebutt. Yeah. You know how I can be perfectly balanced in front of three-headed monsters? Yes, said Crinklebutt. That's what I'm doing. I'm just pulling down that, that, that energy, radiating it through my heart. And, you know, I can just talk to these guys and sort the mess out. That's pretty cool, said Crinklebutt. I'm going to do it too. Crinklebutt made the resolve from that day forward to always pull down that energy and radiate it through her heart. And you know what happened? She became known as the lady that was loved by the animals. She was one of the most beautiful beings he'd ever seen. What about these snozzle watches? Well, uh, yes. Crinklebutt looked down the hole as Bubble Monster got out his magical sword and tapped on the gold. It slopped up into a cup and he put it in his backpack. Underneath there was a hole. Looking up at him was one of the most unusual creatures you've ever seen. Completely gold, but with two boggly eyes, one looking up and one looking down, and giant nostrils and a tiny mouth. And he talked like this. Hello, what are you doing? I'm just making some gold. Would you like them? Oh yes, said Crinklebutt. He turned round his gigantic snail-like bum and squirted gold all the way up to Crinklebutt. It was a very, very big hole. And it was a very accurate shot. It went straight up and hit her directly in the face. Oh! Gold dripped down her face. Wow, that's amazing! As she kept it and put it in a cup and put it to the side, ready for later. You're amazing. I didn't even believe you existed, said Crinklebutt. Oh yes, we make the gold. Yes, we come from the stars. When the stars blow up, we are shot out, and then we end up in the earth, and then we make the gold," said the Snozzwatch. That's amazing. Can you take us to your friends? Yes, come with me. Crinklebutt went down the ladder and met Bubble Monster at the bottom. They both went into the earth, ended up in the gigantic hall with the most brilliant statues. Everything was gold, of course. And there, on the throne in the centre, was the Snozwatch King. Hello, I'm the Snozwatch King, said the Snozwatch King. And nice to meet you. This is amazing. What are you guys doing, anyway? Hello. We're just making the gold in the earth. Have you ever thought about being hired out? For certain jobs, you know, said Bubble Monster. Hired out? What do you mean? Well, we have a bridge that needs making, and, and I think you guys would be very, very good at it. Hmm, bridges. Never tried that before, said the, said the king. Yes, let's have a go there. And so, Bubble Monster directed them outside to where he wanted the bill to build the bridge over a big river across to one of his friend's house that he loved very much. So they all started building. It was one of the most unusual bridges you've ever seen. Splodges of gold here, up and down, weaving in and out. It wound round and up and down. It was quite beautiful, but very, very unusual. Bridges, sometimes, are one of those things that, given the circumstance, 
or the river or the gap have to be made in a very unusual way so that people can come together and talk calmly with each other and have a very nice time. Once it was made, he went over and saw his friend and they all sat down with the snozwodges and had a slice of tea and a cup of cake and they all had a wonderful time. The end.